Uh, thanks to everybody for joining Journal Club. Uh, this week, Jody's presenting some work from uh, Dr. Erica Holzbauer's lab, and I will just uh, go ahead and pass it on to you, Jody, to present the work. Thanks. Thank you, Spring. Uh, as Spring just said, uh, Dr. Erica Holzbauer is the corresponding author on this paper entitled Damage Mitochondria Recruit the Effector Nemo to Activate NF-kappa-B Signaling. Dr. Holtzbauer is the William Malmese Professor of Physiology at the University of Pennsylvania Perelman School of Medicine. Uh, since there's a lot of data in the paper, I'd like to go through the introduction uh, briefly. Uh, as we're all aware, selective clearance uh, is a mechanism that protects cells from toxic cellular waste, as well as invasive microorganisms. Um, this process is called uh, xenography. Uh, failure to clear damaged, mit uh, damaged mitochondria via uh, autophagy mitophagy disrupts physiological function and may actually initiate inflammatory cascades. Uh, mitophagy and neuroinflammation are implicated in several neurodegenerative diseases. However, the intersection between these two pathways is unclear, and that is at the heart of what this paper uh, attempts to tease out. Uh, just an introduction to some of the major molecular players in this paper. Uh, NEMO is an abbreviation for NF-kappa-B effector molecule. Uh, it's an essential component of the IKK complex in the canonical NF-kappa-B signaling cascade, which is the left side of this diagram. We'll refer to that later in the paper. But essentially, uh, NEMO is a critical part of the IKK complex that ultimately releases transcriptional repression on I-kappa-B and leads to translocation of the P65-P50 transcription factors into the nucleus to upregulate target genes in NF-kappa-B signaling. And this is related to, um, as I said, cytokine expression, chemokine expression, and this promotes uh, multiple uh, physiological processes, inflammation, immune response, cell survival, proliferation, apoptosis. Um, and on the right side of the slide, uh, I've shown a diagram showing the functions of two other molecules, P62, which is a selective cargo receptor in mitophagy, which you can see here uh, is bound to phosphorylated ubiquitin on a depolarized mitochondrion, and often neurin, which is a mitophagy receptor, which also binds phosphoubiquitin on damaged mitochondria and LC3 on the growing autophagosome. The authors noted that NEMO and optineurin share 64% amino acid homology in their UBON domains, and I've defined an UBON domain here. Um, you can also see that their, um, what they've done here is amino acid sequence alignment, and this is uh, where the regions of homology are. If you look at pairwise structure alignment, as shown on the right, you can see that both NEMO and optineurin are uh, predicted to adopt similar tertiary structures uh, and similar uh, interaction with K63 linked diubiquitin. Uban domains are very important for interaction of proteins with ubiquitin. In the case of optineurin, the Uban domain is required for recruitment to damage mitochondria following pink Parkin activation. And for NEMO, the Uban domain is required for recruitment to polyubiquinated TNF receptor. Given the extent of homology in the Uban domains of optineurin and NEMO, the authors hypothesized that like optineurin, NEMO would be recruited to the ubiquinated outer mitochondrial membrane of damaged mitochondria. The authors used HeLa cells, which are human cervical carcinoma cells, expressing fluorophore tag proteins to interrogate their subcellular localization, recruitment, and co-localization under basal conditions and after mitochondrial depolarization with antimycin A, oligomycin A, which I will refer to as AO for brevity. First, the authors demonstrated a requirement for Parkin in their studies. HeLa cells express very low levels of endogenous Parkin, and in the absence of Parkin expression, AO does, oops, sorry, AO does not induce relocalization of NEMO to damaged mitochondria. However, in the context of exogenous Parkin expression, you can see that um, within an hour in, in a depolarization by AO, you see formation of discrete NEMO-containing puncta that co-localize with uh, mitochondrial marker mitodsred red 2 And this is quantified on the right-hand side, where you can see a robust increase in the proportion of cells with NEMO recruitment in the presence, but not in the absence of Parkin. So they conclude that NEMO is recruited to damage mitochondria in a Parkin-dependent manner. 
Quantitation of the number of cells relative to the percentage of mitochondria with NEMA recruited uh, revealed a range of responses across cells from approximately 10% of mitochondria to 60% of mitochondria, uh, revealing a, a dynamic range of response. Even with the heterogeneity of this response, though, you can see that there is a significant increase in the percentage of mitochondria with NEMA recruited in the presence of Parkin compared to uh, the absence of Parkin. The percentage of mitochondria uh, with NEMA recruited did not increase past the uh, one hour mark. So there wasn't a significant increase from baseline to one hour of AO. And the authors note that although this did not increase um, from one hours, one hour to two hours, it did persist. So the response appears to be maximal at one hour, but persistent to uh, two hours. In order to track individual recruitment events in Parkin expressing cells, the authors use live cell spinning disc microscopy as shown in the video here. Uh, so you can see uh, recruitment and co-localization of NEMO uh, to the mitochondria and you can see the merge here. Um, in most cases, uh, NEMO uh, was recruited as discrete panta over time to uh, mitochondria. However, in rare cases, as you can see below, a preformed NEMO puncta gradually associated with the mitochondria. The timing of NEMO recruitment is shown on the trace below with half maximal fluorescence uh, reached at approximately 30 minutes. Um, this is consistent with the hypothesis that NEMO is recruited to the outer mitochondrial membrane by the park independent conjugation of polyubiquitin, which has been shown to occur within 30 minutes of damage. Next, the authors compared the recruitment of fluorescence-tagged optineurin and fluorescence-tagged NEMO to depolarized mitochondria and Parkin expressing HeLa cells treated with AO. As shown in the Venn diagram below, 18% um, of mitochondria recruited optineurin, while only 5.7% uh, recruited NEMO, and 6.7% of mitochondria recruited both optineurin and NEMO. This indicated that uh, optineurin recruitment is a more extensive event and that mitochondria are capable of recruiting either optineurin, NEMO, or both. The authors then investigated the kinetic of recruitment of optineurin and NEMO to mitochondria. I'll activate the video. Um, you can see representative traces shown in C uh, indicating that uh, following AO addition, you have recruitment of um, optineurin and NEMO um, with similar or dissimilar kinetics. Um, and from a quantitative perspective in D, uh, you can see the difference in timing, and they call this a delta T of NEMO minus optineurin. So this is uh, the difference in time between recruitment of the two proteins. And the heterogeneity of this uh, dot plot indicates that neither NEMO nor optineurin is consistently recruited first. Although, uh, and on average, NEMO is recruited about two minutes uh, before optineurin. In order to assess the spatial relationship between optineurin and NEMO, individual mitochondria and in fixed cells were analyzed using fluorescence microscopy. Some mitochondria accumulated only NEMO or only optineurin. Uh, while others accumulated both optineurin and NEMO. But you'll notice that in the group, they do not uh, overlap in their fluorescence. It is, uh, they, the authors interpreted this to indicate that the molecules may co-localize on the same, or co-localize on the same mitochondrion, but occupy discrete or adjacent spaces. In order to determine if optineurin and NEMO compete for binding to polyubiquitin, the authors compared uh, NEMO recruitment in HeLa cells that had been uh, depleted of optineurin, endogenous optineurin by CRISPR. And then um, HALO tagged optineurin was re-expressed as a rescue or uh, a negative control was a vector. And you can see that regardless of the uh, expression of fluorescently tagged optineurin, 
uh, EGFP NEMO is capable of uh, forming discrete visible puncta at sites of mitochondria. And AO uh, increased the percentage of mitochondrion with NEMO recruited uh, in the absence or in the presence of optineurin. When comparing these ratios, um, they found that the uh, extent of NEMO recruitment was not affected by optineurin since the ratios were similar in the vector control and following optineurin expression, uh, which indicated that optineurin was not required for NEMO recruitment to the mitochondria. The authors investigated numerous potential mechanisms that might underlie NEMO recruitment to damage mitochondria. For the sake of time, I'll briefly review the three mechanisms that were uh, not found to underlie NEMO recruitment. Linear ubiquitination was not found to uh, impact NEMO recruitment as there was no effect of AO or HOIL-1 depletion on linear ubiquitination, and HOIL-1 is a critical catalytic component of the linear ubiquitin chain complex, the LUBAC. Uh, likewise, post-translational modification of ubiquitin on the um, Parkin acceptor site, uh, which is phosphate ubiquitin serine 65, had no correlation between NEMO microdomains. And lastly, uh, the potential for escape of mitochondrial DNA from the mitochondrial matrix uh, being the impetus for NEMO accumulation was not thought to be a plausible mechanism because they did not see any correlation between double-stranded DNA and NEMO at the mitochondria. The authors noted that the pattern of NEMO localization on fragmented mitochondria, however, was similar to the pattern of P62 recruitment. So to determine the extent of co-localization of NEMO and P62 at damaged mitochondria, HeLa cells were depleted of endogenous P62 via CRISPR and fluorescently tagged NEMO and fluorescently tagged exogenously, exogenously expressed uh, P62 were visualized. And you can see that following depolarized mitochond mitochondrial depolarization, um, you can see co-localization of P62 and NEMO at the mitochondria. And this is probably best uh, visualized as overlapping of these traces. The recruitment kinetics of NEMO and P62 were compared by live imaging of HeLa cells expressing fluorescently tagged NEMO or P62, as well as a mitochondrial marker. You can see in the time-lapse images on the left that NEMO and P62 uh, co-localize in space and time following depolarization. And in contrast to the wide variance in delta T uh, between optineurin and NEMO that we discussed previously, there's very little variance in time over uh, the recruitment events between P62 and NEMO, uh, confirming that they are recruited to damage mitochondria with similar kinetics. Um, uh, next, to further explore the association between uh, NEMO and P62, the authors utilized a bead-based trap assay in which fluorescently tagged P62 is covalently bound to uh, RFP beads, um, and they're in the presence of uh, free GFP tag NEMO. And you can see that um, regardless of the president, presence of ubiquitin, absent here and present here, um, free NEMO was able to bind to the P62 conjugated beads. Um, and also these uh, box plots, box and whisker plots show that the presence of um, NEMO or P62 did not significantly enhance the recruitment of the other protein. And on the right side, you can see that both free NEMO and free P62 can associate with um, ubiquitinated uh, GSH beads. And on the right, you can see that um, the binding of one did not enhance the binding of the other. So taken together with immunoprecipitation experiments that were in the supplemental information, uh, these experiments did not demonstrate a physical association between P62 and NEMO in that assay. Um, the authors conclude that although there is a direct interaction between P62 and NEMO, that this association is likely to be transient, dynamic, and low affinity, which is why it was captured in these uh, bead-based assays and microscopy. 
um, but not in an immunoprecipitation assay that requires on uh, more stable protracted associations. These findings prompted the authors to ask whether NEMO and P62 form phase-separated condensates with a high liquid-liquid exchange. If this is the case, then introduction of 1,6-hexane-diol would cause dissolution of NEMO P62 particles. And this is what they observed um, in AO-treated cells, the um, puncta of uh, NEMO at the mitochondria are, uh, are dissolved. You see the loss of these bright fluorescent puncta. Phase separated condensates are also predicted to recover fluorescence through exchange with the cytosol in a fluorescence recovery after photobleaching assay or a FRAP assay. As you can see in this time course in which photobleaching occurs at zero seconds, you have rapid recovery of fluorescent NEMO and fluorescent P62 puncta, albeit at different, um, over a different time course. Um, NEMO fluorescence recovered more quickly than P62, on average, uh, P62 uh, reached maximal recovery by about six minutes, whereas uh, NEMO accomplished this by about three minutes. So taken together, these results uh, indicate a role for ubiquination of depolarized mitochondria in uh, transforming them into platforms for molecular assemblies of NEMO and P62. Next, the authors observed that depletion of P62 by RNAi abrogated visible nemopuncta on depolarized mitochondria. Uh, as you can see here, you have uh, no induction of cells with nemo recruitment in uh, the absence of P62 compared to the scrambled control. The PB1 in UBA domains of P62 are both implicated in phase separation and ubiquitin association. An expression of P62 variants containing various mutations in functional domains of P62 revealed that only mutations in PB1 and UBA uh, were uh, resulting in loss of NEMO recruited to mitochondria. In order to clarify an absolute requirement for P62 and NEMO recruitment to depolarize mitochondria, the authors used fluorescence for uh, immunofluorescence for GFP to enhance any low-level GFP NEMO signal in P62 depleted cells. Uh, reason being, if there was any residual um, P62 uh, that was not detected, uh, it could be playing a role and it could have a uh, an enhancing function, but not an absolute requirement. So what you can see here is that using an antibody to GFP to amplify um, signal, you can see that even in the absence of P62, uh, you do have uh, formation of some nemopuncta um, at the sites of damaged mitochondria. Uh, and the image on the right is uh, showing uh, similar results. So based on this, the authors conclude that P62 is not absolutely required for NEMO recruitment. However, it does enhance the formation of NEMO containing um, puncta. Since optineurin and NEMO uh, were recruited, re oh, sorry. Um, to confirm that ubiquitination of damaged mitochondria was sufficient for uh, NEMO localization, the authors introduced a point mutation in the UBON domain of NEMO. Um, this D304N mutation uh, disrupts the interaction between NEMO and ubiquitin. First, the authors demonstrated that uh, there was no difference in expression between wild-type NEMO and the DN mutant of NEMO. Uh, and in the center, you can see a representative uh, example that um, the uh, DN mutant of NEMO uh, does not form discrete puncta um, that correspond to the mitochondria after mitochondrial depolarization. And from a quantitative perspective, again, you can see uh, a significant induction in the percentage of mitochondria with NEMO recruited only in the presence of wild-type NEMO not in cells expressing the uh, DN mutant 
of Nemo that cannot interact with ubiquitin. So they conclude that the Ubon domain of Nemo is required for maximal recruitment of Nemo to damage mitochondria. Since Nemo and optineurin were recruited to largely distinct populations of mitochondria, the authors postulated that the uh, subpopulations of mitochondria might have different fates. Optineurin is phosphorylated by TBK1 and ULK1, um, and that is required for clearance of damaged mitochondria. So the authors looked at phosphorylation of optineurin on, um, these, um, on these activation sites, and they found that um, numerous uh, mitochondria in cells that have been treated with AO did uh, have fossil optineurin on their surfaces. Um, again, they looked at the proportion of cells that uh, had NEMO recruited and those that had phosphorylated optineurin and found that these were largely distinct subpopulations, although there was a, a subpopulation of mitochondria that had both events. Uh, which is quantified here. Um, next, the authors investigated whether NEMO recruitment was negatively correlated with downstream markers of mitophagy. Um, and they looked at um, a family of protein, proteins that they in term, termed GABARABs. And if you look here, you can see that the vast majority of uh, mitochondria visualized had um, NEMO recruited. However, it was uh, a much smaller proportion that had GABARABs and a small percentage had uh, both markers. So the authors conclude that the subpopulations of mitochondria that are marked with NEMO and those marked with GABARAT mitophagy markers are largely distinct. The fate outcomes of these uh, subpopulations were further investigated um, by comparing the persistence of these subpopulations over time, either one hour or five hours after depolarization. And you can see that the mitochondrial content of the cells decreased from uh, approximately 18% um, with vehicle only to 9% um, after five hours uh, post depolarization. Um, over this time course, you can see a significant increase in the persistence of mitochondria with NEMO recruited and those with optineurin recruited. Interestingly, however, the um, percentage of uh, puncta that contained both optineurin and NEMO uh, stayed consistent. Um, so next, the authors wanted to look at the <laughs> the uh, the role of the IKK and NF-kappa B complexes in uh, depolarized mitochondria. And I referred to this at the beginning of the presentation, um, the importance of NEMO um, in the uh, IKK complex here um, that ultimately is responsible for driving uh, NF-kappa B dependent gene expression. Uh, and you can see that whether um, they wanted to see whether uh, these IKK molecules were recruited to NEMO-containing puncta. And you can see in the presence of Parkin uh, that you do see co-localization of um, NEMO and uh, IKK beta at mitochondria uh, that have been depolarized. Next, the authors wanted to look at whether this complex was active. And to do this, they used um, an uh, immunofluorescence approach using um, phosphorylated or antibodies for phosphorylated IKK. And you can see that, again, um, these puncta that form at damaged mitochondria that contain both NEMO and IKK uh, have the uh, phosphorylation modification consistent with activation of the IKK complex, indicating that the uh, NEMO and IKK complexes that co-localize at depolarized mitochondria are in fact active. In canonical NF-kappa B signaling, active IKK induces nuclear translocation of the NF-kappa B transcription factors, and uh, this leads to upregulation of NF-kappa B target genes, as I mentioned before. Uh, the authors interrogated the expression of three of these NF-kappa B target genes, 
First, TNF-alpha and IL-6 are pro-inflammatory cytokines that are consistent with induction of an innate immune response. And the third transcript they interrogated was IFID-3. IFID-3 is an antiviral transcript, and this is upregulated during the CGAS sting response to cytosolic mitochondrial DNA. And the um, impetus for the authors to include IFID-3, I believe, was to rule out the possibility that the inflammatory response uh, that they would be seeing by upregulation of TNF-alpha and IL-6 was uh, simply related to release of cytosolic mitochondrial DNA from damaged mitochondria. They wanted to really look at uh, whether it was immune-mediated or CGAS sting-mediated. And what you can see in the central panel is that um, induction of, uh, of TNF-alpha and IL-6 occurs um, in a uh, somewhat Parkin-independent manner. Um, however, no condition led to upregulation of IFIT-3. Um, they looked at the requirement for of NEMO for this and um, found that if they uh, suppress NEMO with siRNA, that they abrogated the uh, upregulation of TNF-alpha and IL-6, and that was induced in response to mitochondrial depolarization. And again, um, there was no effect of um, depolarization on the upregulation of the IFID-3 transcript. They last looked at whether there was a role for P62 in upregulation of NF-kappa B target genes. And uh, you can see that regardless of the presence of um, P62, um, you have upregulation of TNF-alpha and IL-6. So they concluded that NEMO, uh, but not P62, was required for upregulation of NF-kappa B target genes after mitochondrial depolarization. Lastly, the authors wanted to determine whether NEMO recruitment and NF-kappa B signaling were activated in a more physiological cell type. Um, they utilized human cervical carcinoma cells, which have been used as a model to interrogate many molecular pathways. However, the translational nature of the work um, would be limited without the inclusion of additional cell types. First cell type they interrogated were hippocampal neurons, and they found that the recruitment um, to of um, NEMO to puncta was um, occurred in both um, basal and depolarized mitochondrial conditions, um, so that it, at least in hippocampal neurons, uh, this recruitment of NEMO was not dependent on activation of um, mitochondrial damage. Next, they looked in primary murine astrocytes and found that. Uh, the co-localization of uh, NEMO to the mitochondria in discrete puncta was, uh, was something that occurred in response to mitochondrial depolarization, uh, suggesting that the, uh, the mechanisms that operate in neurons and astrocytes uh, may be distinct. As far as conclusions, um, I picked four of, of their conclusions um, that I thought hit the highlights of the paper. Um, first, they demonstrated that initiation of pink one parkin mediated mitophagy recruits the NF-kappa B effector molecule to the outer, outer mitochondrial membrane of depolarized mitochondria. Uh, NEMO, P62, and optoneuron are recruited in parallel to ubiquitinated mitochondria. However, the uh, these recruitment events can uh, occur in distinct subpopulations of mitochondria. They demonstrated that NEMO and P62 interact in phase condensates on the mitochondrial membrane. And lastly, they uh, found that NEMO recruitment activates NF-kappa B signaling to induce uh, a subset of inflammatory cytokines. And they proposed this working model of fate pathway determination for damaged mitochondria in which mitochondria, mitochondrial depolarization results in recruitment of NEMO and P62 or optoneuron, optoneuron to distinct subpopulations of mitochondria. The optoneuron marked uh, mitochondria are targeted for um, mitophagy uh, and degradation, and the NEMO uh, P62 containing mitochondria uh, that are not targeted for degradation can persist and activation of uh, the IKK complex with subsequent activation of NF-kappa B and uh, pro-inflammatory downstream events 
uh, may underlie why there could be persistent inflammation um, because you have basically two pathways, one that is uh, persistent and activating inflammation and the other which is undergoing uh, mitochondrial recycling.